cruising is definitely different than any other type of vacation. So in this video, I'm going to go through all of the cruising do's and don'ts that you need to know, especially if you're a first time cruiser. Hi there, I'm Ilana from the website lifewellcruise.com. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Now, if you are planning your first cruise, you are in for a treat. It is going to be so much fun and I am telling you it is addictive. So don't say that you weren't warned. But on this channel, we talk a lot about cruise tips and cruise packing tips. And what I'm gonna do in this video is going to share with you the cruising really do's and don'ts that you absolutely need to know to make sure that you have the very best vacation. Now, before I get started, I did wanna mention that if you enjoyed this video, if you find it helpful, informative, or enjoyable in any way, then please do give the video a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And of course, please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Okay, let's get started. So let's start off with your embarkation day. So the first do is do fly in at least one day before your embarkation day. And if possible, even if you're driving in, make it easy on yourself drive in one day before and stay in a hotel near the port so that you can start off your cruise on the right foot without any nervousness about getting to the cruise ship on time. Do explore the ship once you board. You're gonna see that ship is huge, but explore it from top to bottom, from aft to forward. Make sure that you see that whole cruise ship. It's probably gonna take you a couple of days to orient yourself, but start right away. Don't assume that the drink that you were handed upon embarkation is free. That actually happened to us on our first cruise. We were on a Royal Caribbean cruise. We were handed a drink by the waiter who had a tray of, I think it was pina coladas. And we said, oh, thank you. And then he said, your card, please. And we said, oh, and we handed it over. And of course we did pay for the drinks, but that did surprise us a little. Do take the stairs whenever possible. Now, especially if you're going only up one or two flights of stairs, or you're going down one or two flights of stairs, if your knees are good, take the stairs, avoid the elevator. Firstly, the elevator is almost always going to be crowded so you're going to be happy that you take the stairs but secondly the stairs are kind of your friend because I probably don't have to tell you that there is a lot of cruise food to eat and you will probably be overindulging even if you don't want to so the stairs to your friend take them as much as possible do embark in your cruise wear or pack a change of clothes in your cruise carry-on bag so that you can change and freshen up and that you're not in your winter travel clothes don't forget to pack your cruise carry-on bag and especially important, don't forget to pack your valuables and your medication. Do your e-master or safety drill as soon as possible after you board your cruise. This does have to be done before sail away, so you may as well get it over as soon as possible. Don't forget to put your cell phone in airplane mode before sail away, otherwise it could result in a very big bill. Do stop everything that you're doing and take in the sail away. Now, when your ship slips away from shore, it is like nothing else that you've ever experienced. I think you may even feel it physically and even emotionally, you actually will feel a little bit lighter. It really is like nothing else. That is the moment that you know that your vacation has really begun. The adventures lie ahead. Now you may wanna take in sail away on the top deck at the party, or you may wanna take it in privately on your own balcony, but definitely don't miss it. Don't forget to bring and wear sunscreen and I would include lip balm in that as well. Don't overindulge on the drinks, especially on the first day of your cruise. Believe me, you will regret it. Do enjoy and take pleasure in all of the different cruise foods, but do try not to overindulge too much because you don't want to be sick on your cruise. Do get a balcony cabin if you like to get away from the crowds. Don't feel pressured to upgrade your cabin just because other people may like a certain type of cabin. If you're in an inside cabin and you're on a budget and you don't think you're going to be in the cabin very much, that's going to suit you just fine. Do research your cruise ports before you go. Now you may want to book cruise line excursions. You may want to go off on your own. However, a little tip, especially if you are a first time cruiser, is a good way to make it easy is to book those cruise line excursions. Book a morning excursion and then in the afternoon you can go back to the ship, you can eat a little bit, and then after lunch, you can go walk around the cruise port on your own. Do be nice and polite to the crew. You'll notice that the service is really very good 
on a cruise and the crew is really very friendly and they want to make sure that you have the best vacation possible. Don't remove the tips or the daily automatic gratuity. Now, something that you should know if you're cruising for the first time is that cruise lines do charge um, a gratuity or a service fee, or sometimes they call it a crew incentive. They charge this to your account every day. And this basically goes for your waiters, your cabin attendants, as well as some people that work behind the scenes. So when you do remove that, what happens then is it really does penalize the people that are working so hard for you. Now, I'm not gonna go more into tipping on a cruise in this video, but if you would like a separate video all about tipping and gratuities and how that works on a cruise, please let me know in the comments below. Do bring a few dollars, a few small bills with you to tip people along the way on your cruise. And that is going to start usually onboarding day when you have the luggage porters, they're going to take your luggage. It is customary to give them a few dollars for your luggage when they do take it from your cab or your car. As well, when you take shore excursions, you may want to give a few dollars to the guide or to the bus driver. Don't choose a cruise cabin that's under the pool, under the disco, or right next to the kids club. As well, if you're concerned about motion sickness, stay away from any of the cabins that are at the very forward of the ship or the very top. Do pack a first aid kit with over-the-counter medication with band-aids and antibiotic ointment. As well, if you're bringing prescription medication, it's a good idea to bring two weeks extra of that medication with you on your cruise. Don't forget to pre-book any online reservations that are available. So that includes any of your dining reservations, any of your show reservations. That's the case on some cruise ships, not on all of them, and as well your excursions. Something to note is that a lot of the popular excursions, they can sell out before your cruise. Do keep an eye on the schedule and make sure to take in those shows. So whether it's the production shows, the comedians, uh, the love and marriage and other game shows, make sure that you do go to the cruise ship entertainment. You will not be disappointed. Do visit the kids club on the very first day and register your children. Go to the open house if you're cruising with kids. Don't ever be late back to the ship on a port date. Now I get nervous even thinking about it. It is every cruiser's worst nightmare. So unless you're with a cruise line excursion, in which case they will wait for you, that is the guarantee of the cruise line excursion is that it'll wait for you if you are late. But otherwise, if you go on a separate excursion or if you go off on your own, make sure to plan to be back at least a couple of hours before the ship is due to depart from the cruise port. Do be careful what you bring off the ship on port days. Most cruise ports will have a rule that you can't bring any fruits or vegetables off in a cruise port. Oftentimes you can bring some dried foods, but definitely check that out before you bring anything at all. Don't ever throw anything overboard on a cruise ship. This can result in you getting kicked off the cruise ship at the next port. Don't ever climb on the balcony railings. Don't ever climb on any of the railings on a cruise ship. And of course, if you're sailing with children, do supervise them well. This is something very dangerous and as well can get you kicked off the cruise ship. Don't get overly romantic on your cruise ship balcony. Just something to mention, there are cameras everywhere. Do pack a non-surge protected power strip for your cruise. Now something that you're going to notice, especially if it's your first time on a cruise, is there are hardly any electric outlets in a cabin. Sometimes there are one or two electric outlets and that is it. And unless you're on a new cruise ship, you're not going to have any USB outlets. So make sure to bring a power strip. It has to be a specific non-surge protected power strip or something that's called like cruise approved. I will leave a couple of good ones in the description below along with some other Amazon cruise essentials that you might find handy for your cruise packing. Don't wait until you're home to resolve any issues that happen on your cruise ship. So if you have a problem on your cruise, if your cabin isn't being cleaned as well as you'd like, if your food isn't to your liking, if there's any issue at all, even if it's a service issue, make sure either you talk to the person involved, so it could be your cabin attendant, but otherwise, if you're shy to do that, go ahead and speak directly to guest services. They'll make sure that they settle it and they make it right on the cruise ship. Because otherwise, if you wait until you're back home from your cruise, unless it's really something major, there's usually nothing that can be done. Do bring seasickness medication or remedy. So even if you don't expect to be seasick on a cruise, it is always better to have something just in case and be prepared. Do look at your cruise line's dress code. And if there is a formal night or an elegant night, make sure that you do pack that clothing for that night, including those accessories and shoes and belts. Now it's a good idea to have a good cruise packing list so you keep yourself on track as you're getting ready for your cruise. Now, if you're in need of cruise packing lists or planning forms for your cruise for whatever part that you need, 
I have a cruise planner that includes 47 pages of everything from embarkation date checklist to payment trackers to shore excursion planning forms and more. So I will leave the information linked in the description below if you're interested and you do want to check that out. Do bring your own wine. Now, of course, if you have a beverage package, that's great. You won't need to bring your own wine. But if you don't have a beverage package, know the cruise line policies. In many cases, they will allow you to bring wine. So why not bring that on board and save a little bit of money? Do try new foods on a cruise. Now, that is one of the pleasures of being on a cruise is that you have a chance to try things that you normally wouldn't try at home or even at a restaurant because you don't have to pay per meal. So order something and if you don't love it, well, you can order something else. Nobody will be upset. You could even order two meals if you like, or you could share something with somebody else at your table. Don't pick the wrong cruise line or the wrong cruise ship for you. If you do this, you're probably not going to enjoy your cruise as much as you can. So the best way to pick the right cruise for you, if this is your first cruise, is maybe talk to a travel agent. They will be really helpful to be able to help to steer you towards the right cruise for you at your budget. You can also watch videos like this and you can watch vlogs and vacation videos that you can find on YouTube. You can of course read blogs and read reviews as well and that'll give you a good idea if that is the right fit for you. Don't overpack. Now I say this even though I am definitely an overpacker and I'm always working on it on every single cruise, but a good rule of thumb is put out everything that you want to bring and then remove about one third and you'll probably be just fine with that. Don't forget to pack a light sweater or a light jacket for your cruise. Now, even if you're on a hot or a warm weather itinerary, it can happen that you can have a cooler day or a cooler evening or even inside the cruise ship, it can be a little bit cool. Now, ladies, make sure to pack a shawl to cover your shoulders. Sometimes the air conditioning in the dining room or a theater, well, you know the way that is. So make sure that you pack something to cover your shoulders. Now, I do have one very important tip, but before I do, let's talk about disembarkation. Make sure before the last day of your cruise that you do leave out sleepwear for the last night of your cruise as well as a disembarkation day outfit as well. And finally, do make sure that you participate, that you have fun, that you bring your good attitude on your cruise and then you're guaranteed to have an amazing vacation. Now, I hope this video was helpful, especially if you are going on your first cruise. Now, if you have any questions, please leave them in the description below. And if you've cruised before, please leave your additional tips there as well. And I am going to leave the details about the cruise planner in case you're interested, linked in the description below. It is a printable cruise travel planner. So what you can do is you can print out only the pages that you need. You can print out multiple pages if you want for certain pages. And of course, you can use it again and again and again for this cruise and every other cruise that you take. Now the information is going to be in the description below and it is $10 off for a limited time. Now I'm going to leave a video right after this one all about the things that you absolutely must do before disembarkation day, the last day of your cruise. Now I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And of course, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Bye for now and happy cruising.